today's conversation, I've titled our conversation Legacy Rebirth. Legacy Rebirth. Jesus is in the do-over business. Jesus is in the rebirth business. Jesus is in the fresh start business. And so if you're here today or you're tuning in online and you find yourself maybe in a need of a bit of a reboot, uh, a reset, if you will, uh, then maybe today's conversation will be for you. John chapter 11, I'm going to start reading at verse 1, follow along, I'm in the New Living Translation. A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. So we have three people here. There's two sisters, Mary and Martha, and a guy by the name of Lazarus. Skip down to verse 3. The sisters, the two sisters, sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. Now, I don't know how, whether Jesus had like a common cold, whether it was just, uh, you know, well, I don't know what very sick means, but clearly they're saying, your dear friend, we know that Lazarus is a close buddy of Jesus. Jesus, it's important for us. We know you're out there doing the touring thing. Please be aware that Lazarus is very sick. Verse 4. But when Jesus heard about it, he said Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. So is this a bad sickness? Like Jesus is bringing up death in this conversation. How serious is Lazarus' sickness? Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so the Son of God will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Mary, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Let's stop there. You ever get frustrated with God's timing? You know, you ever pray about something or say, God, you know, I could use some help here. And it just feels like, you know, your, your prayers are hitting the ceiling or maybe like there's no response crickets. You know, uh, one of the one of the truths that we see the way kind of the takeaway truths uh, that we can see in the story is that there's always a purpose for, for the timing in which Jesus does things or doesn't do things. And when he delays, in this case, we're told that he's going to stay where he is for the next two days before he says to his disciples, verse 7, finally, let's go back to Judea. Jesus is, is, is delayed. So maybe you're in a place today where you're like praying about a new job or a new relationship or something that you, you want to do and you feel like there's just no answer. Don't lose hope. Keep the faith. Jesus sometimes has a purpose, always has a purpose for his delays. Skip down to verse 17. So when Jesus arrived at Bethany two days later, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. So what, is, what happened to Lazarus? He died. In fact, by the time that Jesus even got the word that Lazarus was very sick, he was already dead, wasn't he? Now, it's interesting in the context of this Bible story is that the Bible writer makes a point that he had been in the grave for four days. Why is that significant? Because in the Jewish faith, the Jewish kind of religion, if you were dead for three days, there was sense, still a sense of hope that maybe you could come back. I don't know what happened in, in that three-day period. You ever heard of the, the term purgatory? You know, it's like this holding place that sometimes people believe that you go to if you're not quite ready for heaven or, or for hell. I don't know if the Jews believe that, but they believe that in this three-day period after death, you know, there's a, there's a sense of your soul was still, still there. But after four days, here's the key thing. After four days, you were unequivocally dead. Your soul was, was, was determined whether it's going to go to wherever it's going to go. But four days... The Bible writer is making it clear that Lazarus is full on dead. Verse 17. Skip down to verse 20. So when Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. So Mary's ticked off. Martha goes to see Jesus, but Mary's not so much. So if you've ever been ticked off at God, you're in good company. Mary stays at the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha. Yes, Martha said he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. But Jesus told, him, told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never ever die. Do you believe this, Martha? Let's stop here. This is what we call a legacy moment. Do you believe this, Martha? 
You know, Martha had come to the place in her relationship with Jesus to believe that he was the son of God, that he was the, the Messiah that the Jewish nation had longed to, longed to come. And she even goes to the, to the, to the point where she says, Jesus, I, I know that you could have prevented him from dying and you chose not to for, so whatever that, it, you know, for whatever reason, but I know that even now God, the father will do whatever you ask. So Martha's sort of saying, Jesus, I know that even though Lazarus is, is, is gone, I still believe that th you can do something here in this situation. And to which Jesus responds, I'm the resurrection and life. Do you believe this, Martha? What say you? Yes, Lord, she told him, verse 27. I've always believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world from God. Go to verse 34. Verse 34. Where have you put him? Jesus asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. Now, most of you know verse 35 here, John 11, verse 35 is the shortest Bible verse in, in, in the Bible, all of scripture. So for, if you want to impress your friends with a little biblical trivia, say, hey, what was the, what's the shortest Bible verse? You can say John 11, 35. But what's really great about this verse, it says, in my translation, it says, then Jesus wept in the Greek language, which is what the Bible was originally written in. It, it says, G shed tears. Jesus shed tears. So what are we getting a glimpse here of Jesus? His humanity, right? His, his emotion. You know, Jesus claimed to be the son of God, and yet when he came to earth, he, 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 he kind of cast aside or set aside, if you will, uh, his sovereignty so that he could relate to, to you and, and, and me as, as a man. And I, I love the sort of the, the fact that Jesus is feeling the loss of, of, of the death of his friend, Lazarus. He shed tears. Verse 36, the people who were standing nearby said, see how he loved him. But some said, this man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Yeah, what's up, Jesus? I thought we were buddies. I've seen you heal people, you know, raise people from... Prior to this event, Jesus had raised two people from the dead. He had given people sight. He had given hearing to the, to the deaf. He had caused the lame to walk. He, couldn't he have come and done something for Lazarus? That's what people are asking. It's a legitimate question. Verse 38, Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb, a cave with a stone rolled, rolled across his entrance. Here again, we see more of Jesus' humanity. He's angry. I don't know if his, the veins were bulging out of his, his forehead or his neck, but the Bible says that he's angry. You know, you ever, you ever lost anyone to death? You know, one of the, one of the emotions that people feel is, is anger. Why was Jesus angry? Was he angry that he didn't get there in time? No, because he's the resurrection and the life. Was he angry that... Th Why was Jesus angry? I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. But he's angry as he arrives at the tomb. A cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. We're kind of giving a, 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 pre a foreshadowing of Jesus' own burial in a tomb, aren't we? Verse 39. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. Now here's where it gets good. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he's been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Now, isn't this the same woman who just said, I believe you're the Messiah, you're the Son of God? And yet, when it comes to where the rubber hits the road, as we say here in America, she's not so sure. But Jesus responded, verse 40, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. I'll keep reading. Then Jesus looked up to heaven. He said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. Now, why did Jesus shout? After you've been dead for four days, did you have to shout to wake somebody up? I mean, was Lazarus in some far off distant place that Jesus had to shout? Could Jesus have whispered? Could he have been silent? So why is Jesus shouting? He's shouting for the people. He's shouting in the same way that Jim's is, Jim is in this tank talking about his faith and how Jesus is, is his, his Savior and his Lord. He's saying, I want you guys all to know that something big is about to happen here. 
Listen up. It's like when a siren goes, what do people do? They follow, they're like a bug to a light. They follow, where's the siren going, right? Jesus is shouting and he's saying, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave cloths, his face wrapped in a head cloth. Then Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. I don't know why Jesus was shouting, but I know the results of Jesus shouting. Jesus tells us here in verse 44, the, the, the Bible writer tells us that Jesus says, take off the grave clothes, right? Jesus, brothers and sisters, in the, is in the business of setting people free. Have you experienced that? Yes. Jesus is not hindered by your setbacks. Jesus is not hindered by the, the, your mistakes, what, which seems like that is an impossible mistake for Jesus to forgive. No, Lazarus has been dead for four days. Nothing is impossible for Jesus. When Jesus wants to do a rebirth in you, when he wants to do a do-over and give you and me a fresh start, he is the resurrection and the life. Some of you might be in a place right now where you could use a little resurrection power in your life. Maybe you're facing a situation at work, you're just not sure how much longer you can go. This boss is killing me. Maybe some of you are feeling the weight of finances in your world and you're just going, I'm not sure how much longer I can keep it together. Maybe some of you have been hurt in a relationship. You've been betrayed. Your trust has been betrayed. And you're feeling like, oh, I'm not sure I can love anymore. Put myself out there. Brothers and sisters, Jesus says, Jesus says to us in this story, I got you. I'm with you. Take off those grave clothes. You're not defined by that anymore. I'm the God who puts things back together. Take off those grave clothes. You are not dead anymore. You know, Jesus' ability, ability to raise Lazarus from the dead, at least for me, makes it easier to believe that God the Father could raise Jesus from the dead. Does that make sense to anybody? And here's the thing about Jesus. Some will believe and some won't. If you read on in this story, you're going to read how people immediately, because of this amazing miracle that they witnessed, put their faith in Jesus. But you go a little bit further and there's a group of people are going, we got to stop this guy. We got to snuff him out. He's going to cause problems among the Romans. Some people will believe and some people will not believe. The question is, this is a question that God asked, Jesus asked Martha, what say you? In Colossians chapter 3, I'll, let me read a few verses and then I'm going to land the plane here. We're told this, it says, for you were buried with Christ when you were baptized... You were buried with Christ when you were baptized and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. It means that when we put our faith in Jesus, he resurrects us to new life. Verse 14, 13, 14 says, You were dead because of your sins, and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away, then God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all your sins. He canceled the record and contained the charges against us. Amen. He took it and destroyed it by nailing it to, the, to Christ's cross. Brothers and sisters, this Bible story tells us that earthly death leads to earthly burial, but spiritual rebirth leads to spiritual renewal. Anybody here hungry for some renewal in their life? You're not too old for that. You know that. James proved that. Jim proved that. How many people have seen a 93-year-old baptized before? Today. Today. There you go. <laughs> Me too. And I, I know the camera didn't do justice, but I had to hold them under a little bit extra long. <laughs> Romans 6 verse 4 says, For we died and were baptized with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. You know, for those of you who have your app notes open, there's just one point I'd like you to write down. So write this down, would you? Baptism is an outward symbol that Jesus has forgiven my sins and has made me clean inside. 
Baptism is an outward symbol that Jesus has forgiven my sins and has made me clean inside. Baptiz baptism doesn't save you from your sins. We're told here that Jesus' death on the cross is what saved us from our sins. But it's his resurrection from the dead is what gives us new life. And in the same way that James and Jim and I were in the waters and you were witnesses of that. And he declared his, the truth that Jesus has forgiven him and has given him new life. But the key verse is verse 4 to 26 here in this story when Jesus asks Martha, do you believe this, Martha? What say you? I'm the resurrection and the life. What say you? Jim Strode has declared his faith in Jesus. He believes that Jesus has the authority to, to forgive sins, as do many of you. But is he your Lord? What say you? you. In fact, on the count of three, I'd like us to say that question, that phrase out loud together. What say you? You ready? One, two, three. What say you? What say you? Romans 10 verse 9, so last verse of the day. If you confess with your mouth, we're told that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Not might be saved, not think about saving you. No, you will be saved. And faith is a journey, right? We don't learn to walk or ride a bike right away or a motorcycle right away or a car right away. It takes time and sometimes you fall down, but faith is a journey. And when we put our faith in Jesus, we're told that we're saved and he is going to continue to grow us. So the question for you today and the question for me today is, have you made a decision about Jesus? What say you? Will you invite Jesus to unwrap you from your grave clothes? Will you invite Jesus to breathe new life into your soul? What say you? So let's say a closing prayer. Put everything down. David's going to join me up here uh, on the stage, and then the band will join him here in a minute. But we're going to just do a, a, a rebirth prayer, if you will. So... What I like to do if you're new to Palm Harvest is encourage people to just uh, put the palms out in front of you open. Like as if you're going to receive a gift. If I was going to hand you a gift, you would receive it. And so we want God to fill us today. We want God to just strengthen us today. So just uh, put your hands out in front of you. Take a deep breath. Everybody, let's take a deep breath together. Inhale. Hold it. Now exhale. Again, deep breath in, inhale, hold it, exhale. Now just pray this in your heart. Pray this in your mind. Say, as much as I know, God, I ask you to wash away my sins and breathe new life into my soul. Please renew me today. Deep breath. Exhale. Now I want you to think about this. What's holding you back right now? Anything holding you down? Anything sucking the life out of you right now? It could be a it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could be a good thing. Maybe some of you have a lot of responsibility right now that you are, you are being asked to steward. And you recognize, wow, this is, this is a lot of responsibility. I hope I don't screw things up. Maybe some of you are in a relationship and, and there's tension. It could be with a child. It could be with a parent. It could be a, with a spouse. It could be with a friend. It could be with a coworker. This relationship is just, it, it's draining you. It could be the person sitting next to you right now, now that you walked into this place with. They're just draining you. Or maybe others of you here today are watching online. Maybe you're facing kind of what we call a next step decision. <clears throat> You've got some options. You're not really sure which direction to go, whether to go left or right or stay, stay the course. But you've got to make a decision. And you could just use a little guidance. 
God, what, which direction should I go? What should I do? Whatever it is that might be your answer to these questions, I will, now pray this in your heart. Say, Jesus, I lay before you, and then you fill in the blank. Maybe you're concerned about somebody. Maybe you're concerned, maybe you have a health issue. Just say, Jesus, I lay before you, and you fill in the blank. Say, please deliver me. Please help me. This is my legacy prayer. Deep, deep breath in. Hold well, in. Exhale. Good. Would you all please stand as the band comes up to join us? Let me give you one final blessing. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for being here today. And as God's ambassador, I bless you today. I bless you with an increased measure of Jesus' resurrection power. The same power that raised Lazarus from the dead after a four-day delay... In God's grace, I pray that he would pour that over you today. So know that wherever you go, whatever decisions you make, know that God is with you and he is for you and he loves you. I bless you in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen and amen.